Medulla oblongata is the direct upward continuation of spinal cord. It extends from foramen magnum to the lower border of pons. As you can see in the diagram, medulla is shaped like a truncated cone or bulb-like. Hence, its alternative name is bulb. It also contains some of the vital centers which are essential for life. And the physiological importance of medulla oblongata is due to all these three centers which are cardiac center, vasomotor center and respiratory center. Coming on to the brainstem, medulla oblongata is a part of the brainstem. As you can see in this diagram, we have the lateral as well as the anterior view of the brainstem. What is exactly brainstem? Brainstem comprises of medulla oblongata, pons and midbrain. Cranial nerves arising from medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata gives origin to many of the cranial nerves. The spinal part of the accessory nerve, which mostly arises from spinal cord, also some of its part arises from the medulla oblongata. And the cranial part totally arises from medulla. And both the spinal as well as cranial part merge to form the accessory nerve, which is the 11th cranial nerve. Above accessory nerve, we have the vagus nerve, which is the 10th cranial nerve. And above vagus, we have the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the 9th cranial nerve. Hence, we saw 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves arising from the medulla oblongata. But in medulla oblongata, we have a specific structure that is olive. And olives give origin to rootlets of hypoglossal nerve, which is the 12th cranial nerve. So, together we have 9, 10, 11th and 12th cranial nerve arising from the medulla. Moving on to the external features. The external features of medulla oblongata will be studied under two parts. That is the anterior or ventral part and the posterior or the dorsal part. The anterior features of medulla are firstly the anterior median fissure. The anterior median fissure along with the posterior median sulcus which is located on the posterior side of the medulla helps in dividing the medulla into two parts. It is continuous below with the corresponding fissure of the spinal cord and above it ends in a small triangular depression called foramen cecum, which is at the lower border of the pons. On the either side of anterior median fissure, we have two elongated elevations which are known as pyramids. And the third external feature is the olives. Seeing each of the features in detail, the pyramids mostly comprises of the corticospinal tracts. And most of the corticospinal tracts crosses each other at the lower level of medulla. And this crossing of fibers in opposite side is known as decussation of pyramid. Most of the 75% fibers crosses each other and form the lateral corticospinal tract. And the remaining 25% which doesn't cross form the anterior corticospinal tract. The second feature is the olive. Olives are the oval elevations posterior lateral to the pyramids and it are produced by the underlying gray matter called the inferior olivary nucleus. From olives, as we have seen earlier, the rootlets of hypoglossal nerve arises. Coming on to the posterior side of the medulla. The posterior side of the medulla has the posterior median sulcus, 
which is continuous below with the corresponding sulcus of the spinal cord. But this sulcus is present only at the lower part of the medulla. As you can see, that posterior median sulcus diverges to form a triangular area and that triangular area forms the floor of the fourth ventricle. On the either side of the posterior median sulcus, we have three longitudinal elevations. From medial to lateral they are fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus and inferior cerebellar peduncle. On the posterior side of the medulla, there is attachment of cerebellum. And this attachment is via peduncle and that peduncle is named as inferior cerebellar peduncle. This diagram shows the posterior or dorsal part of the brainstem. We will learn further features of the medulla with the help of this diagram. As we have seen earlier, fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Both of this expand to form the tubercles which are known as gracile tubercle and cuneate tubercle. We can also see here the inferior cerebellar peduncle as an elevation. Also, another elevation is present lateral to the cuneate tubercle and that is tuber cinarium. It is mostly produced by the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve. As we have seen earlier that the posterior median sulcus will divide to form a triangular area. And in that area we will have some of the features like area postrema which mostly controls the vomiting. We also have the vagal triangle there along with the hypoglossal triangle. And we can spot a green stripe like structure and that is known as stria medullaris where the medulla oblongata ends. Also lateral to anterior median fissure we will have anterolateral sulcus and same like it lateral to posterior median sulcus we will have posterior lateral sulcus. Hence we are done with the external features of medulla. We will see the internal structure of medulla with the help of cross sections. We will take the cross sections at certain levels. The first one will be at the level of decussation of pyramids. Second one will be at the level of decussation of medial lemonisci. Third one will be at the level of olives. And the fourth one will be at the level just inferior to pons. Seeing the first cross section that is at the level of pyramidal decussation. As this section is at the lower half of the medulla, it will closely resemble the spinal cord. So we will have inside the gray matter and outside the white matter. But you can see some of the changes which are a narrow strip like projection of the gray matter and that projection will have nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Also the apex of the posterior horn gets swollen up to form the nucleus of spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. That nucleus is an upward continuation of substantia gelatinosa which is present in the posterior gray column of the spinal cord. We will also have the spinal tract of trigeminal nerve which caps the spinal nucleus. As we have seen earlier, the pyramids are also present at the lower half of the medulla. That pyramids crosses each other and form the pyramidal decussation. And that 75% of the fibers which crosses each other on the opposite side will form the lateral corticospinal tract. The one important feature to note here is the detachment of the anterior horn due to decussation of pyramids. On the lateral side we will have the reticular formation. 
reticular formation is present on all of the cross sections of the medulla. Along with it, we will have the dorsal and ventral spinocerebellar tract and lateral spinothalamic tract. Hence, we are done with one of the cross section of the medulla. The another cross section will be at the level of sensory decussation. In this cross section, as you can see, there is firstly the narrowing of gray matter and mostly we have the white matter. Also, the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus gets detached from the central gray matter. As we have seen earlier, that fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus mostly form the posterior white column and that fasciculi will terminate into their corresponding nuclei and form the first order neuron. From the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus, the internal arcuate fiber arise. That fibers goes forwards and medially around the central gray matter and decussate with the corresponding fibers of the opposite side in the median plane. And this decussation is known as sensory decussation. And those fibers turn upwards to ascend as the medial lemniscae on the opposite side. Now, what is medial lemniscae? The medial lemniscae mostly comprises of fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. And the function of it is to conduct sensation of discriminative touch, position and vibration. Anterior to medial lemniscae, we have the presence of pyramids. Dorsolateral to nucleus cuneate, we will have the accessory cuneate nucleus, which will receive most of the lateral fibers of fasciculus cuneatus and form the posterior external arcuate fibers. The main function of these fibers is to convey the proprioceptive impulses to the cerebellum of the same side via inferior cerebellar peduncles. Whereas the internal arcuate fibers convey the impulses to the opposite side. Now we will see the features which we have seen earlier in the cross section which are spinal nucleus and spinal tract of trigeminal nerve, reticular formation, dorsal and ventral spinocerebellar tract and lateral spinothalamic tract. Anterior to all of these tracts, we have the inferior olivary nucleus. Also, on the posterior side of the medial lemniscae, we have the presence of MLF, that is medial longitudinal fasciculus. MLF is mostly a compact tract of nerve fibers which interconnect 3rd, 4th, 6th, 8th, and spinal nucleus of 11th cranial nerve. Inside the central gray matter, we also have some of the nucleus. From medial to lateral they are hypoglossal nucleus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, and nucleus of tractus solitaris. Hence, we are done with this section. The another section is at the level of olives. As you can see that central gray matter is not seen here because it is spread over the floor of the fourth ventricle. And it contains several nuclei which are hypoglossal nucleus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, nucleus of tractus solitarius, vestibular nucleus, and spinal nucleus along with that spinal tract of trigeminal nerve. We can also see nucleus ambiguous which lies deep within the reticular formation. And nucleus ambiguous give origin to the motor fibers of 9, 
tenth and eleventh cranial nerve. As you can see, that vagus nerve, which is the tenth cranial nerve, is arising from the nucleus ambiguus, dorsal nucleus of vagus, and nucleus of tractus solitarius. We will have the inferior olivary nucleus and posterior to it we will have dorsal accessory olivary nucleus and medial to it we will have the medial accessory olivary nucleus. There is the presence of hypoglossal nerve which arises from the hypoglossal nucleus. We will have the pyramidal tract and below it we will have the arcuate nuclei. The arcuate nuclei receive the fibers from the cerebral cortex and send the efferent fibers to the cerebellum of the opposite side through anterior external arcuate fibers. Posterior to pyramidal tract there is medial laminiscus. And above medial laminisci, we have tectospinal tract, which is one of the change in this cross section. And above tectospinal tract, there is presence of MLF, that is medial longitudinal fasciculus. The last cross section is at the level inferior to the pons. In this cross section, no major changes are seen, and some of the changes which are seen will be discussed in pons. Coming on to the blood supply of medulla. The blood supply is by two vertebral arteries, anterior and posterior spinal arteries, anterior and posterior inferior cerebellar arteries, and basilar artery. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like, share, and subscribe.